Hey guys, what's going on? This is the Eric Barber coming back at you with a brand new movie review. Today I've watched Thor Love and Thunder, so welcome to my spoiler review of the film. So let's start right into it. Let's talk about the plot of the film. I will say this film, in my opinion, did not really match the levels of heart and death of the third Thor movie. Thor Ragnarok but I felt like it was still solid it kind of hit all the right notes and in my opinion it was well paced some stuff felt a little cheap in terms of the overall plot but again I thought everything serviced well and for the most part everything made sense a few people I saw the movie with tried to you know bring up some plot holes but in my opinion I didn't really think there were plot holes I thought they all made sense within the movie and the fact that it's a comic book movie for the characters themselves uh, again you know uh, the big players here is Thor, Korg, Valkyrie and Jane Foster now these are all established characters but I will say that their relationships in other movies like Thor 1, 2 and Thor 3 uh, between Thor and those other individual characters felt stronger and more developed uh, it kind of felt like their relationships even kind of took a step back for a second, if that makes sense. And I felt like that was a little bit of a bummer. Um, you don't really get the sense of closeness that they had before, which uh, was a little bit of a bummer. Uh, as for the villain, Gore the God Butcher by Christian Bale, I thought he was awesome. I thought he did a really, really great job. Um, he does a really solid performance from pretty much start to finish i thought you know some scenes he was in probably weren't executed the best but i thought him as a villain played the role perfectly um that's something that trailers don't really mislead you at all about in my opinion i did see some people saying oh i wish he was more powerful i'm gonna just say this there's kind of an issue in comics where uh villains and stuff just keep getting scaled higher and higher and higher there's really no return to form and i kind of like the fact that i just come out and say it like hella still kind of in my opinion this up for debate hella to me is more would be gore the god butcher in a fight any day of the week i don't think that really comes off as a spoiler because it's kind of open for interpretation but anyways, I do like how the fact that they aren't just scaling up. It's like, Hela was so powerful. She's like, smash Thor's hammer and look at Gore. He could snap Snorp Stormbreaker in half if he wanted to. That doesn't happen in the movie. I just, example. Um, and, you know, let's talk about the action. I always kind of hate when uh, villains kind of bring up these dumb CGI armies just for, like, fodder to fight. And the movie does do that a little bit. But I will also say there are some really creative and cool fight scenes in this movie. And I really enjoyed it. Like some of, There's kind of a mid-movie fight scene that I will just say kind of elevates the level that we've seen in most Marvel movies. Probably my favorite Marvel fight scene since uh, Shang-Chi. And I thought the Shang-Chi uh, fights were almost all incredible so I thought that was uh, really raising the bar uh, the cinematography I thought was all really good um, there were a few times where the CGI was a little spotty uh, but it really wasn't anything bad and you know there have been like Marvel movies like Doctor Strange even some parts of No Way Home Eternals where the CGI looks sloppy I, didn't, I never thought it was like that bad in Thor, so I was always really cool about it. Uh, the music, it kind of fits the same route that they're going with Thor Ragnarok. I don't think they went to the same extent, but I thought it was fun. And that's kind of how I'd wrap up the film. I thought it was fun all the way through. There's a lot of banter. And, you know, with Marvel, uh, their banter kind of gets ragged on a lot and I'm one to rag on it too I thought their jokes worked um and I thought there were a lot of scenes that were funny you know and I don't see that in a lot of Marvel movies uh were a lot cringe of course 
super duper cringe. But hey, it is what it is. Uh, another thing is, and I feel like this is always really important, is like, maybe this how I appreciate the film a little bit better, but nowadays, like, how people view Marvel movies is like, their Marvel movies. Like, for instance, like, to watch the new Doctor Strange, you didn't just have to watch Doctor Strange 1, you had to watch like, Infinity War, Endgame, all this other stuff. Uh, Thor is a little bit more forgiving, whereas, kind of, you just watch the Thor movies, they kind of help you out with, like, everything else in the crazy grand Marvel universe. And for that, I appreciate. And there's two post credit scenes that I think are pretty cool that uh, do have me excited. Last thing I want to address is that a lot of people have the criticism of Phase 4 that uh, they're not really going towards any larger arch-villain fast enough like Thanos. Um, you know, there has been some stuff, like King the Conqueror, a few other names have been floating around. I think this movie moves the needle in that direction pretty well, in some subtle ways, and some big ways, and maybe some people just ignore it, or it's not going direct enough. And I'll just say this, like, Iron Man 2, like, what, what did that set up, you know? Iron Man 3, what did that set up, you know? Like, Pepper Potts getting the suit down the line, I mean come on like not all these movies have to lead up to something huge like let it stand alone as a movie and i think it does that and i mean though i had a lot of criticism about this movie i will say i had fun with this movie it was cool to see thor do thor things you see him at a really powerful level there's a lot of good action i love to see thor interacting with korg valkyrie even jane foster I just wish we had more of that and it just felt deeper, but it was still cool to see. The music was cool, the cinematography, cool. You know, felt a little bit different from all the other staple Marvel films. So for this, maybe a little bit higher rating for you guys, but I'm giving it an 8 out of 10. I would definitely recommend watching Thor Love and Thunder. I didn't give a Doctor Strange review. There were some issues with the uh, audio, but I, I would rate this above Doctor Strange. For you guys reference. Thanks for watching everybody. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out.